Bye, everyone. Okay, guys, um, good afternoon and welcome to the IMAA's Insights and Innovation Series for this um, Monday as we head towards the second last one for the year. Today, we have the amazing Trade Desk, a great partner of the IMAA, and leading the Trade Desk, we have Chivo, who is uh, not only uh, a great and amazing human being, but is also incredibly smart when it comes to first party data. And today, he's going to be sharing the first party data uh, playbook. Uh, it's a roadmap to having better data and a better understanding of it. Uh, in a non-biased uh, way, as he's assured me that it is. Um, so without further ado, I'll hand over to Chi to uh, take things over. Thanks, Sam. Um, as always, a, a, a glowing introduction and, and much appreciated. Hey, everyone. Um, uh, my name is Chi. Um, I hope you all had a fantastic weekend. Um, I am the Director of Accounts for the Trade Desk, um, which uh, suffice to say I'm a full-time therapist and sometimes sandwich delivery man. Um, but today, um, I've been asked to take you through um, a quick presentation. Um, I only anticipate I'll talk for about 25 minutes. Um, and as with any presentation, this is interactive. So please feel free to yell out, type out any questions. Um, the way Google Hangouts work, um, when I share my screen, I can actually see your faces. Um, so yeah, please, please just yell out um, if there's any issues. Um, as always, um, I have connectivity issues, two minutes before any live presentation. <laughs> um, but uh, please bear with me um, if there are any issues. I'm just gonna share my screen. Can everyone see that? We've got that, mate. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, once again, I, I can't see your faces, so I'll just rely on the, um, the verbal cues there, mate. Um, <laughs> Uh, but today, I wanted to take you through um, what we call the first party data strategy roadmap. Um, as as uh, Sam was so kind to mention, this 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 presentation really is is uh, not nothing particularly uh, trade desk bias, but rather a, a roadmap that we've developed um, to help not not only brands but agencies as well steer their conversations and develop a fully fledged first party data strategy. Um, at the trade desk, uh, you know, we quite simply say that that first party data is is probably the most valuable asset that any brand um, has, and, and that's because first party data is is the essence of who uh, the consumer is, who the client is, how they interact, how they act, how they behave, who they are, um, and that is so incredibly important to any robust brand strategy, um, and so important to any strategy um, uh, that plans to find uh, even more customers. Um, before I, I launch into this, um, uh, for those who, of you who are unfamiliar with the Trade Desk, uh, essentially we are uh, the, the world's largest independent media buying platform. Um, so we are a programmatic platform. Um, the acronym that we operate is, is DSP or Demand Side Platform. Um, and the simplest way to describe that, and, and we do work with several of, of the IMAA's um, partner agencies too, is um, clients come in uh, to our platform to transact programmatically. Um, and that very premise is to, to activate um, many different data cues just to, to make sure that you're um, placing your ad in a, in a decision um, and a considerate way. Um, so that's enough about us. Uh, to, to go through uh, what I'm going to talk through today, uh, I want to talk a little bit uh, about the why before I actually launch into it. And, and many of you should be incredibly familiar with this. Um, but, but truthfully, a, a robust first party data strategy just helps you build a more trusted relationship with the consumer, which is so incredibly important in today's um, advertising uh, ecosystem. Um, of course, it improves advertising targeting. And we all know right now that budgets are probably squeezed more so than ever. And as such, media dollars have to work harder. Um, our, our own motto, the, the trade desk is do more with less. Um, and truthfully, that's probably what programmatic does. Um, and then, of course, uh, measure performance to make sure that everything you're buying is actually working for you. And then, of course, future-proof uh, a marketing strategy because all of us should be here for the long term. Um, so how to use this roadmap? Uh, I'm going to go through uh, kind of an eight-step process. Um, it's important to note that, that actually, truthfully, many of, of you on this call and many of your clients are probably at various stages of, of this actual loop. Um, stage one being being very, very early. Um, and this could be a, a new brand which has come into market. 
Um, and then there are brands, of course, which are probably all the way to step seven, analyzing their first party data strategy, making it better, refining it, improving it for the future. And so it's important to note that um, maybe a piece of homework is to go back after this presentation and we will send this to the IMA to distribute. Um, but to assess where you are at in, in this loop, whether it's step two, step four, step six, because knowing that you'll be better able to plan how to move to the next step and kind of create this uh, virtuous cycle, so to speak. Um, and I will be going through each of these um, in a little bit more detail. Um, so uh, of course, step one is just to define um, a first party data strategy. I already told you why it's important because it's the essence of who consumer is. But of course, um, the strategy doesn't really work in isolation and it's absolutely critical that you align Sorry, excuse me. Um, that you align your business goals and everything towards kind of not only the type of data that you're collecting, but you, what you want to do with that data. And this definition phase is so important because many brands actually kind of, they know they want a first party data strategy, but, but typically they struggle to define the why or what they actually want to do with it. So it's really important to start at this, this base point. Um, and to understand that, you have to understand the objectives that are trying to be achieved with this first party data strategy. Several of them are listed here and many of you probably activate against them already. So whether it's um, all the way down to, to customer retention, ideas to, to re-engage customers, whether it's pulling back customers who have maybe um, left some items in a cart. Sorry, I am doing this call from um, the front of my place because my son, I believe, is sleeping. I hope he's sleeping. Um, uh, so bear with me if there are a couple of garbage trucks going past. Um, uh, it could be winning back, um, you know, customers that have moved on to other competitors. But there are many different objectives can, which can help you in this define phase um, and probably relevant to, to every different specific um, vertical and type of client that you work with. Step number two is to define the first party data roadmap and strategy, sorry, design. Um, and that is to truthfully take a look at the first party data you're already collecting and then design and develop the guidelines that will actually help define uh, the types of first party data and how you want to activate. Um, and it's important to do this in order to get close with your customers. And there are many different ways you can do this and many different ways that brands already activate this, whether it's through research groups, which we're all familiar with, um, analytics by a very, uh, all the different means. I'll talk about this a little, um, a little later. And then of course, competitor benchmarking because it's important to understand what your competitor is doing if you're going to win more of your customer's attention from them. Step three of the roadmap is the actual acquisition of it. Of course, you can't activate any first party data if you don't have it in the first place. So enabling the activation, sorry, the, the acquisition of data will enable everything else post. And the acquisition of the data will help you develop a customer journey in order to better advertise, convert, and then um, do more with the actual client. And so there are many different ways to actually acquire first party data. And I'm sure many of you are familiar with this. And of course, uh, you know, I can't think of a single brand which doesn't have a website. And of course, there are different pixels, methodologies that you can use to gather first party data there. Many brands nowadays um, host apps um, where they're also enabling a collection of first party data. There's actually a lot of transactional data which can be processed offline too. Um, I'm sure all of us are familiar with many of the loyalty programs like flybys and so forth. Um, and then, of course, social media, where social media platforms do allow you um, to, to tap into that first party, party data is a really important part of it. And then, of course, paid advertising, but the collection of data via actual performance, different channels that you're utilizing, all of this will actually feed into your first party data strategy. In order to do this, it's actually important to, of course, support data collection. And, and there are many different ways you can do this. And, and of course, your brands would be experts at, at this already. But we've already seen many different and like to be honest, we've just had which I engaged to, to give my data to actually receive tangible benefits, whether it be like free shipping, significant discounts. And of course, savvy brands are utilizing this to further build out their um, first party data lists. So it can be um, exclusive offers, rewards, um, even uh, social media and social game participation um, is it, pretty cool and something that, that um, a lot of brands are developing. Of course, content um, and then recognition via various means um, and a gamified uh, universe. But 
collection and acquisition of first party data should of course be a priority because the bigger your first party data pool is, the more you can do with it, obviously. Um, before we do go further, it's important to note uh, the incredible amount of data privacy um, uh, regulation that's out there. Um, uh, idea of um, collections of knowledge that you can um, uh, that you can read more about this, and of course, brands should be incredibly up to date on this. Whether it's um, just consents of uh, the acquisition of first party data. Um, treating first party data with both integrity and security by enlisting the help of third parties. And then of course, um, ongoing accountability to show that you're respecting the consumer's um, uh, information. All of this is incredibly important in the modern day uh, advertising world. Uh, before I, I go forth, sorry, and once again, I can't see your faces. Um, are there any questions? No, cool. Um, I will roll on. Uh, we're halfway there, um, and uh, we're going to look at how to unify the first uh, first party data strategy and to bring it all together to get a better understanding and what we like to call the single view uh, of the consumer um, and who your customer truly is. Um, and and why is this so incredibly important? Um, well, we'll actually these are kind of the four key reasons. The very first is, is fragmentation. Now it makes it so important to get a single view of the customer. Fragmentation being the simple fact that, you know, most of us um, have a work laptop, a phone, a smart TV, a smart fridge, and just so many different ways with which we engage on the internet. And then of course, so many different personas. People now have multiple identities. I have a work email. I have two personal emails. I have... Um, there are so many different ways and it's important to kind of coalesce this to get a better understanding of individual users. Um, and of course, there's data deprecation. Um, we all know the cookies going away. Um, and at the trade desk, we firmly do believe it will go away. And so will um, uh, many of the different ways that, that, you know, many of the different ways that we can track people are just being changed on a dime. We saw it earlier this year with Apple. Um, and as such, um, being able to unify data is, is even more important. I've already mentioned regulation. Australia itself is going through a very, very hard look at how we regulate consumer uh, protection and privacy. I expect that to be a major theme of um, the government's plans for 2023. Um, some of the different frameworks that you can use to unify data. Um, uh, we have, uh, uh, there's an industry solution called Unified ID 2.0, which relies on uh, essentially a single sign-on, which is then secure um, and decoded by um, different various sources to better identify. And then there are companies which specialize in uh, identifiers, such as LiveRamp, they've created um, the Ramp ID, and there are many different other identity solutions. That's not the topic of today, um, but um, there's, there's plenty of reading that we can share around um, about um, the new world of identifiers and how better to unify first-party data going forward. Uh, on to step five, how to actually enrich your strategy. Um, and in order to do that, it's, it's important to actually accurately personalize advertising because we all know um, that there's a very fine line between creepy advertising and then completely irrelevant advertising. And we all know the worst ad to ever receive is an ad for something you've already purchased. And so it's important to enrich your data strategy to make sure it's working hard for you. Um, different ways you can do this. Um, of course, it's the, the consistent iterations and progressive profiling of who your consumer is and constantly reviewing um, what the first party data is telling you. It's partnerships um, with other relevant brands, other relevant companies who can tell you more about the data and get them working hard, sorry, get the data working harder for you. And then, of course, it's, it's um, actually engaging in data marketplaces, whether it's via data management platforms, um, customer data platforms, consent platforms. There are many different data marketplaces um, with which brands can enrich their first party data now. Um, and then step six, um, the fun stuff, actually activating against that first party data, taking those insights to develop just a really, really impactful and powerful campaign. Um, and a unified first party data strategy just allows you to, to kind of interact with consumers wherever they are throughout their journey. And in this modern day of advertising, a consumer's journey really happens in an omni-channel sense. And, and you know, like um, the advent of, of programmatic digital at home means that 
Now, advertising can truly be tailored to, to, to wherever a person is. And we all know that we're in different moods throughout the day, looking for different things, influenced by different channels. And it's really important that we use first-party data to influence a person wherever they are through this omni-channel journey. On screen, uh, you can see some kind of different examples of how that might happen, whether it's uh, simple retargeting all the way through to targeted follow-up emails, such as, hey, we noticed you didn't, uh, you didn't purchase this, we're just wondering why, all the way down to, to post-purchase, whether it could be um, an email and complementary products. There are so many different ways to activate first-party data along the consumer journey. Uh, and then, of course, it's just important to, to connect your own and pay channels um, just to improve the uh, overall effectiveness of your advertising. Own channels, I went through some of these before, but the ability to utilize own channels um, will just really enhance your first-party data strategy as a whole, um, all the way down to, for instance, where people are consuming uh, connected TV, you can now activate data against, which is just really exciting. Um, and then, of course, um, analysis. Um, uh, all of uh, the agencies on this call will fulfill this really important part of analysis and ensuring that we're having a, a deeper look at the data and what it's telling us. And the information and insights you can glean from first-party data, um, I've, I've mentioned several times, is, is, is just so important to every single brand. Um, and we can analyze performance. We can actually eke better customer value um, and actually client value too in order to, to um, perfect um, advertising strategies, we can better identify the most effective channels, which will once again get media dollars working harder. Um, we can better identify new audiences via things like lookalike targeting um, uh, or, or using many of the different algorithms out there to better understand uh, tapping into new markets. And then of course, better understand are the offers that we're offering our clients actually working for us. You can only do this with a robust analysis strategy. Um, and there are so many ways to actually measure the performance of a first party data strategy campaign, whether that be uh, Last Touch. Um, uh, we all know Google um, is, is huge fans of, of um, Last Touch attribution. Um, it can be actually looking at time decay, uh, which is just essentially how long it took for a user to actually convert um, post exposure. It can be algorithmic. There are many companies out there now specializing in this, which is super cool. Um, they develop custom algorithms based on, on inputs from both brand and agency to better understand how first party data is working. Um, and then you can do uh, um, like what we call linear attribution, which is just equal attribution across all channels used. And then the final step in the loop, um, which therefore starts again at step one, is just the optimization. Um, the best first party data plans are consistently optimized, um, accurately attributed, um, and then these insights, of course, start the entire loop all over again. Um, and it's important to learn how your customer responds to different campaigns. Um, so many brands are experts at this, and there are so many different ways that you can improve conversion metrics, whether it's changing the call to action, the copy of an ad, uh, the placement, the format, the uh, but even the time of, of, of when these, um, these ads are actually being served is it, it, just so incredibly important. And then at the trade desk, we're obviously huge fans of um, uh, controlling frequency because in this modern day, with the fact that we're exposed to ads in so many different various ways, if you're not controlling omni-channel frequency, um, you're probably wasting a lot of money. Um, uh, and of course, we're all familiar with this funnel, um, but the whole optimization basis is, is really defined at goals at each step of the funnel, ensuring that you're aligning this with your customer to funnel uh, all of the potential customers, um, of course, out and down the bottom when they're actually buying stuff. Um, there are so many different ways um, that you can kind of build a first party data plan, and this will take us all the way back to step one. Um, and the first is, is understanding the best way to store data the best way to manage it, unify it, and also coordinate how you're going to use it forward. Um, of course, every platform that you work with should be able to activate first-party data. And then there are many companies which specialize in the analytics, visualization, post-campaign reporting, um, dashboarding, um, and different ways that you can kind of identify opportunities to improve. Um, so that's pretty much all I wanted to take you through today. Um, hopefully, you, you caught that all. Um, and finishing with step eight, it, it essentially starts again at step one in that it begins with the next process of redefining 
and then you're able to kick through each step and start this kind of cycle either on an annual uh, campaign basis but but realistically at the trade desk we feel that this is a cycle that you should be taking every client through um, even on a campaign by campaign basis hopefully you've learned something insightful today um, and once again thank you all so much for your time okay thank you very much my friend guys are there any questions uh, for tea at the moment and often there isn't but we'll help circulate the doc uh, post the event and um, and also pass them any questions if no one's got any questions. Guys, thank you so much for your time. Again, please fill out the survey. You could win $500. Um, uh, fill it out, give, give it to your friends. Get them to fill it out. Um, thank you, everyone. Next week, we'll be back with the um, the, the IMAA year in a wrap and also